Holy shit. I know. Holy shit. Thank you. I mean, you've been trying to get us to cover this topic for a while, and I had my doubts, but you beautiful, wet son of a bitch, you did it. Finally, uh, an airtight theory that indisputably proves that all of the Coen Brothers movies take place in the same universe. And they're all based on different Shakespeare plays. And the way you sold the theory. I mean, like, literally, the things that you said. So cleverly delivered it was like watching a Coen Brothers movie. Uh, now you're just blowing smoke. I don't think anyone here is going to refute any of your points. Yeah, I mean, check's paid, shall we? Yo, who told Captain America about the Holocaust? Not me, I was with you guys the whole time. It might have slipped out. What, what are you talking about? In 1942, Captain America wiped out the Red Skull and, um, um what, what's the compendium for Nazis? Ah, uh, load. Ooh, thank you, a load of Nazis. Then, he's frozen and brought back to present day. He's obviously been spending some time getting caught up on culture because we see he's got that list in Winter Soldier. I'll put it on the list. He's moving on to Marvin Gaye and Steve Jobs. He's probably all caught up on world culture stuff, right? Well, it helps. He's thinking he heroically sacrificed himself taking out the biggest evil in the world in 1942. And now, someone has to sit him down and be like, yeah, that's great and all, but the Holocaust sort of kept going through 1945. Turns out, men can still be monsters even without the Red Skull's power and monster face. And? I don't, I'm not following. I don't know. It's an interesting and awkward conversation that must have happened at some point. Must it have, though? Because nobody's straightening out Cap's priorities, okay? He's got Disco, Thai food, and Rocky, and the Berlin Wall, and the moon landing on his list of things to check out. Okay, let's not assume that he has caught up on anything. Fun fact. That list is different depending on where the movie's released. So like in England, the Berlin Wall is the Beatles, and in Australia, it's Steve Irwin. That fact was not fun at all. New fact, please. Oh. Also, can we get mozzarella sticks for the table? Thank you. I'm just saying, either someone had to tell Captain America his big heroic sacrifice didn't wind up ending the war, and no one stepped up in his place for a while, or someone still has to tell him. What a demoralizing conversation that must have been, or must well be. That's nothing. Imagine going through puberty in outer space with Yandu's gang from Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. okay. Because that shit happened to Star-Lord, okay? He got kidnapped when he was a kid and then spent the rest of his life with Yandu's gross band of thieves, okay? Puberty and learning sex education is hard and uncomfortable enough for all of us, and we learned it the official way in public school. Oh, uh, not me. I was raised on a boat, so I learned from my parents out at sea. Although I didn't really need to be taught exactly. Boats are small, so there's not a lot of room for secrets or privacy on a boat. You grow up real fast on the sea. Yarr. Okay, for, for those of us who are not boat schooled, mm -hmm. we had to learn the awful old-fashioned way. You know, in school, from a gym teacher, while chaotically horny for the first time and embarrassed to be alive. There's an order to my horniness. <laughs> what? Can I live? I, I, I will fit, but then I do want to... Okay, so Star-Lord would have to get over A, his mother dying in front of him, B, having been abducted, and C, realizing that monsters and aliens actually do exist, and then he would have to have a conversation about his changing body with a bunch of aliens, all of whom kidnapped him, some of whom wanted to eat him. I mean, what would that conversation even be like? They are a bunch of aliens with presumably different genital situations, okay? He would be like, uh, oh, no, my, my wiener is getting long and, and harder for the first time ever. And then, and then an alien would be like, that's weird because mine turns into a bunch of snakes when I'm horny. Nice. Probably why he's open to sex with lots of aliens. Right? Because Peter Quill fucks. Okay, we know this. Look, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I forgot you're here. But his sex ed must have been a nightmare. Sex ed doesn't teach you how to fuck, though. It just teaches you that we Sean Gunn was human, right? He could tell Peter about boners. That's what I'm saying. Not a lot of great options. Mm. Mm. Speaking of sex, Tony Stark is definitely gonna 
Scamp Man. Thousand percent. I mean, we don't know that. Thousand percent. It's so hard for me to believe that she's someone's aunt. Yeah, well, they come in all shapes and sizes, you know. I, I agree, probably he will, but like in the context of this conversation, we don't know for sure that that's an awkward moment that will definitely happen based off of things we've seen in the movies. For this conversation, that's disqualified. But I want to imagine it. I don't like the rules. Kind of seems like you do. Fine. Something about Hulk, maybe? The Hulk. Let me get there. Damn. Scientist, green. Big banner. Big banner. Big boner. I got there. We've talked more about boners than we usually do today. Yeah, and it's still early. Anyway, even though they switched Hulk actors between the Incredible Hulk and the first Avengers movie, William Hurt is still around as General Thunderbolt Ross in both movies, and Tony Stark appears in the after credits Hulk scene, so we know that everything that happened in the Incredible Hulk is still canon with the current Marvel Cinematic Universe. Wait, so the fact that Hulk used to be boring is canon? Yeah, but uh, more importantly, in addition to it being a bad movie, it also features a scene where human form Hulk is about to get busy with his lady friend, but his heart rate watch starts going crazy and he realizes if he gets too excited he might hulk out and nobody wants that. Speak for yourself, Boat Prude. I just mean that the Hulk has not had sex since he became the Hulk. Hulk never smash? Hulk never smash. That's so sad. I mean when he was like a nerdy little kid who was super into science no one was throwing it at him and now he's a superhero and he still can't get laid. I adore you. <laughs> Oh my god, has he even had sex? Wait, has Captain America had sex? Oh, how many virgins are on the Avengers? Just like ballpark. Thor fucks. He does, and I want to get into that. But I think Carmen might be onto something with her virgins. Come on, they're not my... You're making it sound like I'm starting a cult. Steve Rogers went from not enough to super buff, but then he was frozen for decades, and then he started doing Avengers stuff immediately. And then he had that weird kiss with Sharon Carter where there is no chemistry whatsoever. Spider-Man's a teenager and can barely even talk to girls. The Hulk can't get horned up, and the Vision is brand new. No one even knows what's down there. It's just Black Widow, War Machine, Falcon, Thor, and Stark getting it done for the whole team. Hawkeye. Yeah, but who cares? Care. There it is. The most awkward stuff to happen in the MCU is a bunch of superheroes sitting around a table talking about sex, except that they're all Steve Carell from The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Mm. Ah, sh y'all, I gotta dip. But do you guys wanna come back and talk more pop culture? I mean, there is a lot of stuff that we haven't even touched on yet. How can Black Widow be a famous spy? And if we as America can lend our military to our allies, can we also lend them to our superheroes? Did we ever get our food? All valid questions. Till next time? Yeah, 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 food next time. Okay, thank you guys for agreeing to come back here so quickly. No, no, I get it, man. Honestly, I think I'm just as mad as you. The dude couldn't possibly be Anton Sugar's cousin well, for like a thousand reasons. Yeah, and how can Donnie also be Carl from Fargo if Donnie is dead? Uh, Donnie isn't dead. What if? <laughs> My theory. I don't know. Can't we go back to before where we weren't questioning me and because I was great? No, Daniel, look around you. We are in a thing. This is us in a thing. Thank, Thank you. you. Fine. We'll dig into this. Yeah, of course we will. That's what we do. We will never stop. Of course. I mean, I don't think anyone has to worry that we, this specific group of people, will ever, not ever again, get together and discuss pop culture. Yeah, I mean, who, who would be worried about that? Whose fears are you addressing? Personally, I would like to see some different people bring a fresh perspective to pop culture, people whose experiences are different than mine, even if I'm not involved in the thing at all. Sure, yeah, no, but I mean, we still, us four, will get together and discuss pop culture in the future. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine not regularly meeting with you three people to deconstruct movies and TV shows here at this diner forever. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. 
Good. That should ease anyone's fear of us retiring or quitting the show or whatever. They were worried about that. Now you say show. Mm. Hey everybody, thanks for watching that brand new episode of After Hours. Click the C to subscribe and click other stuff for other things to happen. We're going to be doing another episode of After Hours every month so that you get two. Don't be mad that it's new and different. It's also new and more. Yay! Yay!